Hi there, I'm Grant Ronald from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. Now, as you may already know, Oracle Mobile Application Accelerator, or Max, is a feature of Oracle MCS which allows business users or citizen developers to assemble their own mobile applications based on the APIs that you've already built and published in MCS. And one of the nice things that Max does is that it abstracts away the details of the web services and the APIs that you develop in MCS into what we call business objects. In this episode, I'm going to put on my MCS service developer hat and I'll show you how to design MCS custom APIs in order to expose them as business objects in Max. Now, REST web services are a fantastic piece of technology. In fact, they underpin everything that's in the Oracle Mobile Cloud Service and of course that includes Mobile Application Accelerator Max as well. But to work with them, developers need a strong understanding of the HTTP protocol and this is something that most business users lack and of course why should they? Now in order to address this, Max has been designed around the concept of business objects. And a business object we can think of as a real-world representation of a REST endpoint or a resource and it abstracts away the complexity of the underlying REST web service. And business objects are comprised of sets of fields which hold the data relating to that underlying resource. And business objects can also have create, read, update and delete or CRUD actions associated with them. They can also have relationships with one another, meaning that it can be peers or participate in master detail relationships. So when it comes to actually building a Max application, the MCS custom APIs you bind to your UI components are called services, and a Max service is simply an MCS custom API that's been built in a specific way. Now to provide a consistent user experience when building a Max application, Max made certain assumptions about the way the custom APIs are built. Specifically, Max expects APIs to support a standard set of HTTP verbs and to describe its data using JSON schemas. And this is why it's so simple when you're building, for example, a detail screen or a create screen or hooking up a delete operation, Max assumes that these CRUD operations will map to specific HTTP verbs. And because you supply a description of the API payloads, Max knows what data is available to be bound to UI components. Simple. So I'll now explain each of those things in detail. So a JSON schema is a JSON description of a data format that can be used for validation purposes. And since JSON schemas are standardized, the Max designer can use them to determine the names and the types of the fields that are found in the business objects. So let's use Oracle's venerable example, the employees table. This is a JSON representation of the employees records. And this is a schema that can be used to validate the employee records. And the fields for a business object go inside the properties member. You can see that the property section contains definitions for the attributes belonging to the business object. The links member of schemas is used to associate link description objects with instances. The schema defines two links for employee records, one for themselves where an employee is added after the resource name and one to a parent collection. In other words, you can get the employee list by calling slash employees and get a specific record by calling slash employees slash ID. And finally, the required member is an array that contains the names of the required fields. And fields marked as required in the schema will be mandatory at runtime in the Max application. So when it comes to building the JSON schema, JSON defines seven different types for the properties on an object. And those are array, boolean, an integer, a number, a null, an object, and of course we have a string as well. And as you may expect, the Max Designer and Runtime take the type of each business object attribute into account. It's also possible to assign constraints 
format and validation to your business object fields as well. So you can, for example, use the minimum keyword to declare a minimum for an integer field. So in this case, we have a minimum of 2000. Or you can define enumerations straight into the JSON schema as well. And of course, as you might expect, the Mac designer will leverage them and users will not have to type these values in themselves. So for example, a region can be one of the values representing India, North America, South America, APAC and Europe. So I've demonstrated how to describe a single employee object. But what if you want to describe maybe something like a full list of employees? Now fortunately, JSON schemas can refer to other schemas using the dollar ref directive. So let's have a look at that. This schema which refers to the previous employee schema validates the JSON employee data I showed you at the start of this episode. The top level result tag contains an array of employee objects which conform to the employee schema. Now defining the fields of your business object is only the first step. Additionally, you need to specify the CRUD actions allowed on each of your business objects. And this is done through the relevant HTTP methods, also called verbs, on the appropriate resources in the MCS custom API. And your member should apply the schemas to the request and responses for each of the relevant methods. I'll just show you this later. Okay, so here is how the CRUD operations that Max looks for in business objects are defined. Firstly, create. This creates a single instance of an object through a post call to slash resource name. The request body must contain at least the required fields for the business object. And the response is the new object instance, including its newly attributed uh, unique ID. The read operation can fetch a collection of business objects or it can fetch a single instance of an object. Now typically such collections are retrieved by doing a get call on slash resource name. However, Max expects APIs to typically offer a nested resource to retrieve a specific record from the collection such as slash resource name slash ID. And this is done by making a get call to the resource name slash ID and the response can be displayed in a read-only details screen. Updates is a single instance by calling a patch or a put on the resource name slash ID. And the put method replaces all of the field values in an object even if they haven't been modified. Consequently, the request payload must contain all of those fields. The payload of a patch can include only the fields for which the values change. As such, it's more efficient and should be the preferred option. Delete an entire record, you call the delete HTTP method on slash resource slash ID. Now, as a service developer in Oracle MCS, let me show you how all of this is tied together in Oracle MCS. Okay, so let's start by logging into MCS. And we'll have a look at some APIs we've created already. I uh, pre-populated an API called Human Resource. And let's open that one up. Okay, and there you can see we've got uh, an API resource called uh, Human Resources. We've got a description for it. Let's go to our endpoint. So we've created two endpoints, one for employees and one for getting an employee by ID. So let's start by defining schemas now. So let's create a new schema. And let's create a schema that will describe the employee object. So we'll give the schema a name. And let's paste in our definition you've seen earlier. So that's the definition of an employee uh, business object. So let's save. And let's create a second schema which is employees, which will be a collection of employee records. So let's create the schema name employees. And again, let's paste in our definition of employees, which references the employee schema. And we'll save that as well. Okay, so now we need to apply those schemas to the endpoints. So let's look at our employees endpoint that we've created. There you can see we've got a description for it. We have a response object already created for it as well. 
um, there's no parameters for this specific one. So let's look at a response. And currently we have some sample data already created. And let's choose a root schema, which is employees. So this is going to return a list of employees. And there's a definition. And let's save that. And let's look at our second endpoint, which was get employees by ID or get employee by ID. And for this one, again, we've got a response already set up, which returns a record. And let's define the schema, which will be the employee schema. And let's save that. So we've maxified our APIs by adding schemas to them. And all we have to do now is publish that human resources API. So let's publish it and let's give a description so that the Max developer knows what he's actually using. And publish. And now we switch to Max and let's create a new Max application called My HR App. And we can pick some of the default screen layouts. And let's this lay, that, lay this out as a form and create. And so the first thing we'll do is let's bind to some data. We choose a service. There's not one created yet. So we're looking within, MCA, within MCS. And here we can see our human resources API that we created earlier. Let's inspect the employee. And on the left, you can see all the different attributes of the employee business object that we defined through our schema. And of course, we can now just drag and drop those onto fields on the form within the Max app. And of course, because within the API, we set up uh, some response example data, we can use live preview. So there you go, how to maxify your APIs based on HTTP verbs and JSON schemas to enable the full power of Max. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.